This is the original Luba mower. I did a review on this probably about six months ago now on the channel. Well, the folks from Emotion have just reached out to me. They've got a new one called the Luba 2 with a funny little head here that contains AI. This is supposed to learn your lawn, find out about the tricks, not get stuck in the same place twice. So let's see what's in the box, go through how to use it and set it up, let it loose on this large lawn and see if it overcomes the problems of the first one and find out if it's the right mower for you. Let's go over quickly what you get in the pack. You get some spare blades and instructions. You get this little AI mounting head with sensors on it so that it can learn your terrain. You have to mount that yourself. We'll do that in a minute. You get a couple of these orange keys. I've already put one in the machine. You get this flash bumper that you mount yourself to the front. That's an emergency cutoff switch like the old one. You have the blades already mounted, ready to go. Yes, they're tiny. You get this Wi-Fi router that you have to mount within Wi-Fi range of your home. You need somewhere, if you're going to use a machine like this, that has both access to electricity and a Wi-Fi signal. You get a charging station. You also can get optionally a cover that goes over the top. That's really important because this thing shouldn't be left out in the rain. So you need to buy the cover if you're going to get this machine. You get a pole to mount on the charging station that you put your router on and you get some cables and chargers and accessories to make it go. So let's plug it all in, get this thing charged up. We've got to fully charge it, load the app on the phone and then start playing. Now that the base station and mower are set up, you've got to put them together and turn them on and let them charge, which is going to give you just about enough time to download the app, enter your Wi-Fi password twice, enter the password for your app about 16 times, and figure out how to use it. Right, create a map. Now we get to go play remote control cars. Network connection failed. I have to upgrade the firmware before I can drive the robot. So now Upgrading. we've got to wait for the firmware to upgrade. It takes a little bit of learning how to use the app. I'd give it about 20 minutes or so to get your head around this. And there's strange little quirky things like when you're resetting your password because you forget it, you have to put in your email address and then you don't hit the big button that says set you have to look for a tiny little green button up the top right hand corner to send a code to your email and then you have to enter that code and press set. Just sort of quirky strange little things with this app that I don't find in most apps these days. So I think we're just about ready to start mowing. Fingers crossed.
Once you've finished upgrading your firmware and connecting the app to your mower and making sure that the Wi-Fi network's selected, then you can create a map here and it should allow you to drive the mower around the outside and it's asking me to upgrade the app again. Okay, so I've just upgraded the firmware for the second time. Now we'll see if we can create a map. And we're going to tap to create a task area. Now it comes up with two little joysticks on the screen and you basically walk around behind the mower, filling out your task area. Let's go. Okay, so we've got another problem here. See those bushes that are in the middle of my lawn? They're in between the aerial and the mower. So the mower just stopped because it doesn't have a direct line of sight to the aerial. So if there's a tree or a bush in your lawn, you've got to make sure that the aerial is higher than it. So we could have connectivity problems here because I've got several trees in this lawn area. So this line of sight problem is going to be a bit of a pain. Yeah, you'll be suspended in more than air in a minute, I tell you, buddy. Jeez. Dum de dum de dum de dum de dum de dum de dum. More setup required. So it's really important to get the little garage kit for your luba. Not only does it stop the mower from getting wet and being destroyed by rain, but you get an aerial extension that you can stick on your wall as well, get some extra height and get over that foliage that might be disrupting your little mower's performance and giving it a headache even when it's only five meters away from the base. Hot tip. Don't bother using the base aerial at all. Go straight to the wall mount and get your aerial as high as possible. Right, hopefully that sorts the range problem and the obstacle problem. It's up to you now, little machine. I like this bit. It's like playing remote control cars. Now, this is the dead zone down here. So I'm just going to go to the edge of it, then I'm going to turn around and I'll have to mow that area with my normal mower. There is one good thing about these little guys and that is that you can get in underneath bushes a lot more easily than you can if you're on the ride on, I suppose. So I suppose that's a good thing. I might just get it to go and visit in here and do a little bit of a mow in here. Oh, we just ran over some dog poo. Oh well, that's a normal test, I suppose. And as you can probably tell, there's a few sticks and stuff in the lawn here too, because we've got a gum tree just over there. I think that's something else that I have to be cleaning up on a fairly regular basis if I'm relying on this to mow my lawn. Now, I'm approaching the dead zone in behind the bushes there. So I'm gonna turn it around before I get to that, because I don't want it to stop. I don't know, I don't think that garden behind me is that unusual and um, yeah, if you've got a garden like that, this might struggle a bit with radio reception. There's a skirt wire along this fence and I don't really want to drive it over the skirt wire. So I'm just going to go up as close to it as I feel comfortable. So as you can see, there's a few trees and bushes in this area as well as a clothesline and a few other obstacles and some uneven ground. So it is still a good test of the Luber even though we're cutting out bits of the property because the signal can't reach. Okay, so we've done a full circle and we should be approaching back to where we started the map. There we go, mapping completed. Please click tick to save it. Area complete. Ah, I feel like I've really accomplished something now. Now comes the magic bit 
we press the MO button and start. Start working. What are you doing? You should be going that way. I guess it's got a mind of its own. Okay, so it's been a couple of hours. I don't know if you can see it, but the robot's over there with its blinky flashy lights on. Let's go and see at how much it's done in two hours. One of the things I absolutely love about robot mowers, have a look at those beautiful straight lines. I don't know of anyone who could do beautiful straight lines on their lawn like that. Having said that, Robot mowers are not fast. They're very slow. The advantage to robot mowers is they can keep going all night. It's not making the big wide sweeping turns that the last model did. Instead, it's a lot more subtle in the way that it's going around barriers. And it's not being stopped by long grass like the old model used to be. So I can see that there's been an appreciable improvement in the performance of this machine. This is the tree that the other one used to always get stuck on. So it's going to be interesting to see if this one does too. So far so good. It's being a lot smarter with the way it's going around the obstacle. Ah, perfectly mown lawn. And without having to lift a finger. So the little Luba robot mower, what do I think after a week and my trials and my setup period. Well, if you've got a standard style lawn and you don't have too many interruptions of line of sight with large bushes and trees, it might be worth considering if you want perfect patterns and a perfect job every time without lifting a finger. There are some downsides to this mower though. One of those being a complex setup process, the initial aerial placement on the charging station that I don't believe should even be there for the smallest of lawns. Quite a bit of mucking around to get the telemetry right. You've got to persist with the technology to update the apps and get the mower in the right position and mark out your lawn properly. And to be honest with you, for the saving of the 12 to 15 minutes to mow my lawn area with a ride-on mower compared to the four hours that the Luba takes with the occasional disruption because of whatever, power outages or a bird flying past the aerial, I'm not sure it's for me, but one thing I'm absolutely certain of, and that is that it's gonna suit the bill for a number of people. So if you guys found this review honest and helpful, make sure you hit the subscribe button, give it a thumbs up. There's plenty more on timthompson.ag, and check out Luba if you want a perfect lawn.